What's up homies? We are reviewing portfolios from LinkedIn once again because I find them entertaining and you find them entertaining and then we can also, you know, all of us learn and improve uh, so you don't end up fucking up your entire career. Okay, so let's get into it. I made a post a few days ago which got pretty popular. I don't know why. But I basically said uh, over the past two months, I onboarded a bootcamp grads. I think I onboarded more, but I didn't want to say that. And let me tell you, the job market is flooded with bootcamp grads, but there's a big issue. Many stop coding until they land a job and their portfolios are often clones of the same bootcamp projects, which is absolutely true. Like if you do not believe me, go and do some research for yourself, which actually I encourage you to do. Another thing that I want to add on top of this is that let's say someone finished a bootcamp in 2021, they stopped coding since 2021, so three years passed since then, and they might end up, you know, getting an interview from time to time uh, by, by luck, I guess. And when you, when I ask them like basic questions, because most of these bootcamp grads that come into my program, they think they are good, it's, it's just the market is not favorable to them, right? So then I ask them like basic questions like, okay, tell me the difference between var, let, and const, or tell me what is scope, or tell me, you know, like really basic stuff. They do not know how to explain basic concepts, okay? So even if they manage to get an interview because they haven't practiced their skill, um, they will fail the interview, right? So... Yeah, that's, that's another um, addition to this post. But let's see what else I said. So what are companies really looking for? Self-taught problem solvers who can adapt on the fly, a modern self-built portfolio showcasing real world solutions, not just coursework, which is fair enough. Um, demonstrated experience with client projects or unique challenges they've overcome, fair enough. Um, it's not about how many years you claim, it's about showing how you've applied your skills, right? Because you can, you know, if you finished the bootcamp like three, four years ago, like <laughs> the time passed, are you a senior developer? No. Okay. But in those four years, you can actually build some sick projects, like some really sick projects. In fact, you don't even need four years. You need three months, maybe six months of like working on one project and then you'll absolutely kill it. Uh, and then I said, your portfolio should speak volumes about your creativity and drive which is fair enough. That's why you have a portfolio. And if you're on the job hunt, keep coding, keep learning and build projects that make you stand out, which is like very uh, good advice in my opinion. I don't understand what's controversial, but then we had this guy here, Ryan Erickson. And by the way, I posted this uh, review, this coding bootcamp portfolio review from App Academy, the 25K coding bootcamp. And then this guy, Ryan, uh, says, get the fuck out of here with your bullshit, LinkedIn lunatics right here, folks. So I didn't know what LinkedIn lunatics is. Then I found out that it's something like a group on uh, Reddit or something like that. Um, and I was like, fuck man, uh, what did I do? <laughs> you know, I was, have I said something that bad? And then I started looking into him, you know, I saw one interesting thing that he, wait one second, I don't know what's happening with my computer, I don't recommend the MacBook Air. Uh, so he actually went to App Academy. <laughs> what a coincidence. Anyway, let's look at his portfolio because I'm pretty sure he's like a solid developer and everything that he makes is outstanding. He doesn't have anything to learn and uh, it's just the world is against him and it's just in an unfortunate situation, you know. Obviously, this portfolio looks outstanding. Like, uh, I've never seen a more modern website in my entire life. Everything here is like absolutely flawless. Let's look at his projects. He knows a lot of things. He knows React, Redux, Node.js, Python, HTML5, CSS3. I think this is Flask, this is Express. He knows GitHub, he knows, Post he knows Postman. I don't know what this is, I, I don't know. Uh, he knows VS Code, he knows SQLite, he knows Postgres, he knows GraphQL. So he knows a lot of things, like I'm, I'm surprised, you know. Let's look at this uh, application. 
um, I think this application is for people who do skydiving because I think he used to do skydiving in the past and yeah it's amazing it looks very modern this chart is not just copy paste from somewhere there's there's obviously a lot of styling involved in here um, he really cared about making this like proper you know and I can see that if I look at the radar here I can see that he's actually using my location um, to grab the weather information from uh, Paul at Warsaw, right? It's not just a hard-coded, um, uh, hard-coded, uh, what's the name? Latitude and lo longitude, of course. Then we have aircraft here. Again, nothing hard-coded. This is a webcam stream. This probably took three months to implement. Um, this is like extremely well styled. Like you can see that he really put a lot of effort into this, this application. I'm just not sure like what's wrong, you know, in uh, with the world. Obviously everyone is against him. He's like a super hard working guy. He's like really standing out. But yeah, uh, something wrong with the world, not with him. Then he has this um, trivia game. Let's see. Welcome to the CSC trivia game. Difficulty hard, start. Wow. This is super hard to make. We have a timer here. This took probably like f at least three months to make this. This is not something from YouTube or from like a Udemy course. This is obviously like, like you know, he really went out of his way to make this application. So, yeah. And then we have Slacker, which is, I think it's like a clone of Slack, uh, which I think it works really well. So let's just check it out. Oh, I don't know why it takes so long. Let me just pause this. Yeah, so this is Slacker. It's a pretty good landing page. Let's look at the application. Login as demo user one, doesn't work. Login as demo user two, doesn't work. Yeah, so I'm really not sure why he's not successful. It's like the world against him. The world is against him. I'm not gonna look at this app. Uh, but feel free to go to ryanerickson.netrify.app and then you can see this for yourself. So, in a way, I get his frustration, right? Um, it sucks to be in his position where he's been lied by everyone, uh, especially the bootcamp who prepared him. And I empathize with him you know i understand how he feels okay so i understand that he's in a position where he put everything on the line he put twenty five thousand dollars down um and he's getting rejection after rejection after rejection after rejection after rejection for years and years and years on top of that he stopped improving so he's not coding any apps whatsoever i saw his github he has activity there, but probably there is like that bot that um, pushes commits every day. So it looks like you're active, but there is no progression. Like when you say I've been doing this since 2022, people are expecting you to have two years worth of progression. But to me, I can see that he has only three months worth of progression and then he stopped. His skills are decaying. His confidence is decaying his dreams are decaying and on top of that you want this bitterness okay and his belief is that uh, everyone lied to him including me and i'm here to like um, put salt on the wood that's not my that's not my intention to put salt on the wound on your wound either but what i do not believe in I'm not, never going to encourage 
the victim mindset behavior. Right now, he's acting like a victim. He's like a child that has been, you know, molested, right? And when, or like a dog, you know, that has been beaten when he was uh, beaten, beat by some abuser. And then whenever you try to like um, touch the dog, the dog tries to bite you, right? He, that's his behavior because he is a victim. But you will never succeed in life if you are a victim. You cannot become a programmer if you are a victim because programming is a, is a skill that if you want to take advantage of it, you have to be in a creative mindset. You have to be in flow. You cannot be creative when you're a victim. Okay. The world is not against you. The portfolio that he has is the result of his work, of his actions. Everything that he has is because of his actions. Everything that you have is because of your actions. Are you unsatisfied with how your portfolio looks like? It's your fault. You're not getting enough interviews. It's your fault. Uh, you know, all these people that say, hey, you should network, but you don't do it because you think that networking sucks and blah, blah, blah. It's your fault. Everything that you have, it's your fault. Everything that this guy, uh, I forgot his name, Ryan has, it's his fault. And until he doesn't accept that, he will always blame his lack of success on external circumstances and he will never be able to progress. It's unfortunate, but I think I'm going to see him on LinkedIn next year, five years from now, 20 years from now. Uh, he's always be skydiving and carry this bitterness in his soul forever. And it's unfortunate, but that's how people work. So if you ever feel like things don't work out for you because of whatever reason, ask yourself, are the reasons that you are claiming to be real, really true? I saw a guy today on YouTube, he said, oh, everyone is offshoring work in India. Like, okay, how do you know that? Is this an opinion that someone stated and you took it as a fact because it made sense in your head? Do you have any tangible like um, proof that could explain that? Um, or people say, oh, you should, um, or people say, what do they say? They say, oh, they want juniors with four or five years experience or they want seniors that they can pay as juniors. Like, do you really know that? Or they want someone that is better than you and you don't know how to get there. And this explanation makes sense to you. And it's covering your lack of progression and it's like making you feel good. Because at the end of the day, all these excuses, they are excuses and they are not helping you move forward. If your question is, okay, they want a senior, how can I become a senior fast? This is a question like, or what is a senior? And then you'll say something like, okay, some senior is someone that can solve problems without help. So, uh, someone that can plan ahead, that can see the future pretty much in, in a way where you can plan ahead the code and whatever, the features. Someone that doesn't need help, someone that doesn't need assistance, someone who knows how to communicate, how to work in a team. Okay, so, I mean, this is not an ex ex um, exhaustive list, but I just enumerated a few things. Can you go and learn some of those things? Can you start emulating leadership? Can you put together a group uh, from like a Discord chat together and you can be the leader and then you learn how to be a senior by force. Can you do that? Of course you can. It's just the perspective of like the victim. You can do whatever you want to do, but you just have to do the thing and you have to stop looking for excuses. And that's the thing. There will be like people who will always have excuses. There will always be people who very few that will figure out a way to make it happen no matter how they feel, no matter what, how valid the excuse seems, because sometimes these excuses seem extremely valid. For example, I have a big uh, limiting belief, which is 
I'm not good at making short form content, like, you know, the TikToks and whatever. That's why I only make YouTube videos because in my mind, I'm not good at it. So today I'm going to work on figuring out why am I thinking that thing is true? Because that is hindering the uh, growth of my business. You understand? So all these beliefs that you have in your head will keep you where you are. If you are a woman, let's say, and you think coding is just for men, then no matter how hard you try to learn how to code, you'll never push through because you'll always say, because I'm a woman, I cannot get there. So your mind is always going to stop you like uh, subconsciously, right? Or if you say nobody hires junior developers, you'll try to figure out how to prove that to yourself. It's like if you if you want to buy a red BMW, right? And you're obsessed with this car. I remember when I was a barista, I was obsessed with the BMW M4. And I started seeing that BMW M4 every single day. And I was like, are people buy are are people really buying this <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis? Like what's happening? Uh, I couldn't explain. That's because you have in your head something called a reticular activation system that is looking for evidence, for confirmations. Okay? So that's a little lesson in psychology for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let's not be like Ryan. Or let's hope that Ryan is going to find God and the truth. And he's going to finally get a developer job. I really want him to get a developer job even though he took a dump on me but yeah anyway i'll see you bye bye